emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Shut up and sit down. Hello again, Colin here, Festa 67's workshop, and welcome to part two of the e-models build of the Tamiya Honda CBR 1000 RR Fireblade. And what we're going to be up to today, well I think our first port of call is going to be getting some of these bits on sticks of goodness ready for going into the spray booth, so that's kind of what I'm going to do today. So I can just drop me frame off of me moto jig for now. Uh, this will be making a, a reappearance later on once everything is getting final assembly. So for the moment, I'll just move that out of the way. And then we'll bring in my shark mouth peg holder of goodness. And we can start getting some of these on the sticks. And yeah. They'll all be getting lined up ready for the spray booth because I'm going to prime everything. So this episode, I'm just going to be building little tiny sub assemblies and getting bits and pieces joined together that I know I can then prime, get ready to go and then start assembling. So I'm going to be backwards and forwards through the instructions today, folks, quite randomly. So I'm just going to grab one of the sprues just to me left there. I've got a little sprue holder that just parked next to me. It just makes it easier for me when I'm filming. And we're just looking for the little cross member to go on the frame. So we'll cut that off like that with the nippers of goodness. Just away a little bit from the piece. And then we can work down the nub then once it's off the sprue. Now, I think those little ears come off as well. I'll just check the old destruction. Yep, they do. So we can nip them off. So I'll get me uh, finger of pointedness just to show you that section there. And you can see these little ear holes hanging off the end there. Yeah, you want to clip them back. So you don't need them, folks. Just little, little bits like that. Get rid of. There you go. Just have a quick inspection, just to make sure. Yeah, look at that. So that'll be getting put into the frame. I'll just quickly give it a quick second. There you go. A little bit happier now. Get the orientation of it right. Let's have a quick look at me magnifier of goodness there. And then just scrape off the mould seam across the edge or the back of the frame there. Right, shall we get a little bit of stickage going on, I think. Yeah, so I'll just do a quick dry fit, get the orientation right, like so. There it is, and then just hold that in place with me finger. And I've got me glue just to me right here. So, we'll have a bit of that. And we'll just join that all together. A little dab in each side. And that will scoot along the joint with the capillary reaction. And that will join that piece in. So that is pretty much where I need to be with the frame at the moment. So I think if we find a suitable place to put the clamp, get one that's already got black paint on it, just pop it up underneath there where the headstock is. Right? And then when it comes to spray it out, I can spin that around in my fingers and give that a nice larapin a primer. All right, let's have a looky look at what next. Dum, da, da, dum, dum, dum. Uh, let's grab that. Is it that one? Yeah, that one. There you go. And we'll get the underseat assembly out of the way. Uh, that'll be getting primed up. And joined up as an assembly. Now there are lenses and things that need to go into this piece later on. So I'll be priming them separately and they'll have their own colour. And then we'll start marrying everything up then. And there's another little bit that goes in this. Uh, I think it might be on the white bro. Don't know. I'll have a quick scoot along here just to see. But I've got a feeling. It's on the other one. Uh, 
da, 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 da. There's only three sprues for me to choose from, folks. Yeah. I'll just drop that in there. Put it on that one. Uh, nope. I don't think it is. I think it's definitely on the white one. It's just this little um, box of tricks that goes up inside there. Only a tiny piece. I think I'm going to be right with me first choice, isn't I? Yeah, come on, Festa. Dum, 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 dum. Yeah, don't be like Festa. Is it on here? No, that's the exhaust. There you go. Tucked in there. Really? Damn. They tucked that little bit away, didn't they? But I'll have that anyway. Uh, what else have we got to come off of there? I don't think there's anything else. Uh, right, let's sand that and get that looking nice and neat. I'll just use my little scraper uh, to go around this. And this is the uh, little lens insert that I was on about that goes on the towel end under the seat there. And it's really got tiny little moulded lenses in there that all need painting up and everything. But it's going to get clipped and ready for priming and then I shall come back and do all the detail work later on. But there's really tiny little lenses in there little three each side so remember that folks that you need to go back <laughs> excuse me you need to go back and paint them so yeah so i'll clip that on there like so and i'm sure there's a little electronics box that goes on the side of this there's a little cut out this is just by my finger there where my blade is I've got a feeling that we'll be putting that on in a minute. We'll have a look. Because if it's painted the same colour, then obviously I'll just glue it on there. Give that a little sand. And I must admit, you know, I mean, we all, we all um, rave about Tamiya bikes, but... I must have hit the moulding on this one. It really does seem that little bit extra. Yeah, no, I don't know whether they've um, invested in new CAD software or whatever, but it does seem a lot more detailed. So whatever they've done, it works. It really is a nice kit. And uh, obviously, if you want to build along with me, Pop over to emodels.co.uk, up in the top left there. And have a look on the site. Grab one, bung it in your basket. Grab it, and you can be building along with me. They really are worth getting one of these. It's a nice bike. And if you do like your bikes, then yeah, you got you got to want a fire blade, didn't you? So let's have a look in the instructions there of goodness and see what we got going on. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I think I think it's on the white sprue cart. Oh, I think it is. Just have a quick look. Yeah, it is actually. Look right down in the corner. That tiny little thing, and that'll have a little pipe connected to it later on to uh, resemblage the electronics and wiring connections. And this tucks into that little nook just up in there like that. There you go. Just press it in. Hold it in with your finger. And I'll scoot a little bit of glue on both sides of that. So I'll shove a bit up under there. And then I'll hold it in place with me uh, finger. And then I'll just drop a little bit behind there just in case it hasn't caught. There you go. Look at that. Another bit bites the dust, folks. 
Happy days. Right, let's have a look here. Uh, I think we might be doing a bit of the trolley in a minute. That holds the bike up. Might as well do the framework for it. The wheels will be done separately because they're going to be a totally different colour. But we can build the framework up on this and get this all assembled. Because again, when you come to display the finished bike, this little trolley is what the bike sits up on. So, well worth getting. Painting it up, making it look seriously nice, because it's going to be an integral part of the build. So. Nip that off of there. So. And then we can go round and get rid of all the the mould lines and, and all of that. Look, I'm a bit fussy with mould lines, I must admit. You know, and it takes takes seconds, really, with the scrapers just to knock them off. But it really does make the difference, you know, because when it's all painted up and you're looking at it, you see the mould line, you're like, I really wish I'd done that. But it's easier to do it at this stage, people. A lot of folks think it's overkill, but it's not. It's just... Yeah, you're just making it a little bit more fresh, aren't you? I'll just scoot along there like so. Have a little scrape. Now you can do this with one of these, or you can use uh, a slightly... Uh, if, if you've got uh, one of your knives where you've knocked the tip off, then, yeah, use the older blade. And uh, obviously, be careful when you do it, but you can scrape it with using a blade as well. And what you want is you want the edge of the blade. You don't want to be slicing towards it because you'll end up slicing it like a bit of cheese. Uh, you just want to drag it along and, and knock knock the seam off. That's all you want to do. So you're using the very sharp bit of the blade, the very, very tip. And just drag it along and uh, it'll pop that straight off. And then you can quickly go over it then with a, a buffer or a sanding stick. I just to knock off any imperfections. Well, this just seem, seems to be scraping off quite nicely under here, so... We'll have a bit of that. Yeah, I'm happy. And then just do the same on the outside edge. Again, just to get rid of the mould line that goes up over the top there. And then you can smooth away at it until your art's content. And it, it, it just just makes it look a little bit more real. I think there's a big old mould line under there, so we'll we'll say goodbye to that. Like so. A little bit of scrapage. And then do the same around this side. Like so. And then underneath there have you a piece of that and then just a deft little sand just to clean that off and you can see it dulling down nicely and it's good because it just provides a key for the primer to bite into then see so like that there you go Now, I must admit, it's a nice little bit of trolleyage coming on there. Okay, and then we do the same on this bit. Working me way along. Use your fingers underneath the frame for a bit of support so that you're not putting too much stress on the plastic. And sort of sand against the edge of a farm or a finger and work your way along like I am there. And you're not stressing the plastic. And then... Uh, same on this piece here, like so. Pull the sander across, let the abrasive do the work, folks. I'm only gripping me sander tight so that I don't drop it, because I do drop a lot of things. So. Right, let's have a little dry fit, just to see how that looks. And that seems to pop, look like that goes in there that way round, but hey, so, a bit of extra fin, bump, have you some of that, and then just pop that in place. 
There you go. A little press with the fingers. Done. Done home. Right, and then we'll do the same that side. Bit of extra fin on the tongue now. Like that. Grab the other side. Line it up. Press. Look at that. Hey, another bit done. So again, bung that on a clip, ready for primer. I'll use a mount there where the wheel goes on to hold that, just so that I can get the paint where it's going to be seen. I'm not too worried about the little bracket because I'll just touch up that corner if I need to with a with a paintbrush because it's between two wheels. So. Right, what are we have going to have a looky look at now? Uh. Going to leave the suspension, springs and all of that lot for the moment. Uh, I think we'll have a look at the swing arm. Yeah, let's have a look at the swing arm, folks. Get that assembled, because that's going to be an assembly on its own. So all the bits of that are going to be the same colour. So we might as well join it up, get that clipped, and that'll be another sub-assembly done. So again, we'll just cut round these edges, leaving a bit of the nub on there. Just so that we can sand it down. Uh, chop out the centre centre brace there. <coughs> Excuse me. And probably pop the ugger off as well with an H. Because uh, I've got a little, little idea for that. I I want a carbon fibre decal wrap that little bit just to make it slightly different. Now the production bike, I can't remember off the top of my head whether it had carbon on it. But this one's going to have because I can. The guy that owns the bike thought it'd be a little bit of a, a suave dude and got himself a carbon fibre rugger as aftermarket and bunged it on his bike. And it just makes it a bit unique, doesn't it? Not a massive amount of carbon fibre, but just a little bit, just to say, I've got a bit of carbon fibre on my bike, and you ain't. So there you go. And James, when he's at the um, counter at E-Model, when someone comes in and sees it underneath there by the counter, they go, oh, that's a nice fire blade. James can say, yeah, but ours, ours has got carbon fibre on it as yours. See? Bragging rights for James. There you go. Anyway, let's get that smoothed out, get a clip on there, and we'll put that right in the corner there, so that I know the ugger is going to be carbon fibred. I get a chance, might do it at the end of this episode, yeah. Alright, let's have a look, see which bits stay on and which, bit, which bits don't. I've got my instructions just to the left of me there, so I'll quickly check. And again, there's some mould lines here uh, that you want to get rid of. So just give them a scrape, get rid of them. All the way along there. Like so. And then just run the sander over there just, just to dull it down. And what this also does is if you've still got a bit of a seam, you'll see a very shiny black line down the middle of it. So then you just go back at it then with your scraper until when you go over it again with your sander you end up with a matte look to the plastic that's consistent and that's your seam gone then see look at that Whoa. yeah have you a bit of that and let's quickly knock off the bit that goes around there by the uh, spindle mount have you a bit of that like so Come along now, and we'll just give that a little, a little tease. There you go. Whoa. Yeah, and a, a tiny mould line there going along now, so we'll get rid of that. So, a little knock edge off there with a the sander. And yeah, there looks like there's one just there as well. So we'll get rid of E. 
Yeah, there it is, little diagonal one. See him? Yeah. Don't want that on there, do we? Oh, uh, yeah. I can remember uh, trying to think of the build it was where I thought it was a mould line and it, <laughs> it was actually, um, I think it was on a vintage car. And uh, I thought, yeah, that's a mould line that goes down the back fender. And it turned out that it was actually a chrome detail that you actually had to paint on the model. And I, yeah, I had scraped it off. So in the end, for the build, I completely went for a de-chrome clean look with shaved handles and all of that lot. So I recovered the build, but yeah, read your instructions just in case. All right, I'm going to do the same on this side. Like that. That's quite a deep mould line, that one. So I will get rid of them. And come down the other way there and do the same just there where you can see it. And then come down the other side of the uh, swing arm. Using me thumb almost as a guide. And then I can just deftly go over it with a sander. And there you go. Another piece bites the dust. Blow that off. There you go. And there's a tiny little mould line right down there. Same as the other side where the rear wheel spindle goes in. So we'll lose that as well. There you go. There you go. I'll tap up all the dust. A bit look under the magnifier to make sure it's all gone. Spotted that there's just a little bit there. This is where my magnifier comes in handy. It's just to me left, and I just pop the piece off to me left. Quickly glance through it, through the magnifier at it, and then you can spot whether you've missed any bit. Uh, I was handy to have one of them at the bench. Again, it's an accessory that you can grab from a model, folks. So they do all of these sort of little tools and pliers and that. So. Treat yourselves, you know you want to. There you go. Come along now. Just gently come along the edge there. All the way down. And there you go. Quick check. All gone. And then just have a look at the brace there, just to see if there's anything that is not supposed to be there. There's a tiny little mark on the edge there, so we'll get rid of that. But other than that, that don't look too bad. And when I do join that together, I'll probably run a little bit of the contact to professional along the joins. And what I do with that, where it's got the metal tip, is I try to simulate a weld line where the two pieces join. So I'll, I'll be doing that uh, on it. So you'll be able to see that. So we'll just dry fit that. So apologies for being off at the left, but me seeing of goodness is there. So we can dab a little bit of glue in the hole there and start that by locating that tiny little peg there into the hole. Now I can grip it and then just scoot a bit of extra fin around the seam there just like that and then when you press it together it just scoops along the seam that's all you need a little dab it's like zoop there you go I might just wop a bit along that seam once it's both parts together right there's another little bit that goes in the other side of the swing arm. Uh, da, 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 there it is, right down there. So we'll get that in place before we join the two halves together, folks. Because it'll be easier fitting it just to the one half. So we'll cut that off. And just make sure that I'm actually cutting off the bits I need. There it is, tiny little piece. Like so. And there's an ear hole on the end there that needs to go. 
just like that. And it tells you this on your instructions as well, folks. When you come to these sections, you'll see these pieces highlighted and you'll see the ear that you need to cut off highlighted. So just a double check. If you're not sure, have a look and compare the picture to what you've got in your hand. And it's that easy to follow. And to me, your instructions are really good because any screws you need, you just take the screws out of the bag, rest them on the instructions, and the screw length is identical to what you should need. So it's a great way of doing it. And it's the same with all the pipes, brake lines, and things like that. To me, I really have got this nailed where they'll say you need a 30 millimeter long piece of pipe, but on the instructions, there's a black line that's exactly 30 millimeters long. It's really really is intuitive and i love the fact that they do that because as a builder it makes it so much easier for you right let's just make sure i'm getting the orientation that is right because it needs to thread through the gap in the swing arm and then it'll pop itself into a little <clears throat> excuse me a little locating pin i'm just eyeballing it through me glass of seeingness making sure that when I put the glue on, it goes in the right spot. And this is where dry fitting comes into it, folks. It's always best to dry fit stuff. Nothing worse than gluing something, realising it's wrong, and having to redo it. So, yeah. Well, that's on there now. I'm happy with that. I think now... We're ready to do the uh, mating of the two halves. So we'll just quickly dry fit it just to make sure it it sits right, that there's no alignment issues. I might need to jiggle it around a bit to get everything to pop in place. But yeah, there's a tiny little pin again on the other side. So that's the first bit I try to get in is the pin. And then I can pivot off of that and then line everything up like so. And then whop a bit of glue straight down there i'm going to go more than i need because i can sand that back and smooth that off to lose the join so i always tend to put a little bit more on exposed seams because i can then buff them back you'll see that later on when we do the mud guard so just pop that in there like so just like that and I just apply a little bit of pressure because the extra thing is like a welding glue. It melts the plastic. So if you just put a little bit of pressure on it, it will squeeze the plastic out into a little raised line. And then you go back at that with a sander. And you end up merging the two pieces of plastic into one. And you lose the seam. Make sure that that's all lining up. Might put a little bit extra dab in there. We'll see. We'll see how it joins together. But we can put that up there now, safe. With the rest of the bits. It's always nice to see your forest growing on here with the pieces on the little tree stems. And suddenly you look at it and you've got a full blown model kit ready to prime. It's yeah, nice. So let's have a look at the next section. I think we'll get the discs and all of that lot off and the wheels. Probably get the front forks off as well. So we can start getting through this sort of stuff. And again with the wheels there, you've got a couple of little um, nubs poking up. But they're going to be inside the tyre anyway, so you won't see them. So we'll just scrape them off. Them nubs. Get rid of them. Get the other wheel off. Same process. Leave a bit of the nub on there. Pop it off the sprue. Bung that back out of the way. And then it's a matter of going around with your scraper. Knocking it off. Not too fussed about leaving it perfectly smooth. Because this lip is inside the rear tyre and the front tyre. So, yeah. We'll 
fuss too much over it, folks. But obviously, you don't leave a big two inch long nub on it because you'll have a lump on your tyre. So we'll slap that in there. Uh, let's have a look at the instructions. I think we'll get the. I think we've got brake calipers to do. Uh, we've got chain to do. So we've got a few little odds and odds and bits to do. So chains on there. So we'll put that out of the way for a minute. And we'll have a look at doing some brake calipers, I think, folks. So we'll grab the sprues that I've got them on. And then there's the discs. I can see them. So we'll have them off in a bit as well. So yeah, I can get quite a few on pegs today, peeps. Uh, all right, let's have a look for the front caliper. Da, 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 da. Might do the rear caliper first, actually. Being that I can see that right in front of me. So let's knock that one off. Like so. Get that in off of there. Get rid of the nub. And then the other half of it is literally right there. Right next to it. Right there. Cool. Pop the sprue back in the rack, and then we'll uh, look at getting rid of any mould lines. Checking the caliper to make sure it looks nice and neat. Go around the edge with a scraper there to get rid of the nub. And these are tiny, fiddly little bits, folks. So bear in mind, your carpet monster might be sitting there licking its lips, thinking it's going to get fed. So do what I do. Normally when I start doing small bits like this, I look at the sprue and I cut off a little bit of sprue that I don't need. And I just flick it down to the carpet monster. So the carpet monster can be chomping down on that bad boy whilst I'm quickly fettling with these little small bits. Okay, so you're, you're beating your carpet monster, folks. Okay? This is Festa teaching you things. I know. A little tiny dab of glue on each of those lugs. And then I let it just go off a tad. Dum, 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 and then I'll put the two halves together. And it just gives it time to start melting the plastic because I don't really want to get a big wadge of glue buried in there because I want the wheels to spin, don't I? And then just press the caliper halves together, just like that. Give it a little squeeze. Eek, like that. There you go, straight on a clip, so that you don't feed it to the carpet monster, because he's chewing on that bit of sprue, don't forget, and he's probably nearly through it already. So if you've got any more small bits, do yourself a little little row of sprue off cuts, and just flick one off every now and then. Keeps the carpet monster happy. Right, let's have a looky look at the instructions. Let's see what wonderful things we got to do next. Right, uh, it's gonna be. Oh, let's have a look. Is, this, is that the sprue there? Uh, da 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 da. Any meeny miny mo. Is that the one? Yeah, there it is. Let's grab that. Let's get that piece. Grab that little bit. Drop that off of there. There you go. And that nub there. there. There you go. We've got the chainage, folks. Yeah, and be careful with this one, Pete, because it is really quite flimsy. Now, you can get detail up kits for these bikes where you build your own chains and things like that, but. This one I'm doing out of the box for remodels, bless them. So you can get the detail upsets for them. Uh, yes, they're worth it. I mean, what I tend to do with my builds is I choose a build from each genre, be it a plane, a train, an automobile, motorcycle, a tank or anything. And that will be the one kit that will get any available aftermarket added to it. And it works for me that way because it can get a bit expensive. But these chains, bear in mind them plastic, they they can be very flimsy, so just just caress it nice and gently. Treat it like a prized princess. And uh, you won't break the chain in half then. 
because I've done that many a time on a bike. I've been a bit heavy handed and I'm like, no. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't be like Fester. Don't go breaking your chains, folks. Right. Let's just have a quick move around and see what delight we've got next. Now I'm thinking, oh, do I do I go for these exhausts? Yeah, come on. Let's do the exhausts. They've been staring out at me going, cut me off, cut me off. So, yeah. It's a nemesis most bike builders have of the exhausts because we all like to try to achieve that sort of uh, hot exhaust look that bikes have where you've got your different colorization, bluing of the exhaust. And we all try to achieve that as builders. So we'll work our way around the sprues, avoiding the exhausts at all costs, because we know when we start assembling them, we've got to start thinking about how we're going to paint them and that. So I'm going to have another go at it uh, in this build and see how it turns out. I'm not going to profess to be the best person at bluing exhausts, but I have a good try at doing it, folks. And if you haven't gone for the effect or tried the effect, follow me along, have a go, and see how you get on. It's all about learning new things, isn't it? That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to teach each other. I learn new things every day in this hobby. And I've been doing it for over 40 years, so... Yeah. It's like anything. If you can't learn something new in the hobby, then is there any point in being in the hobby? Because... It makes it fun, doesn't it, learning new techniques. And we all watch each other's video content and learn new stuff off of each other, so go for it. I'm just getting off all these mould lines, because when you hold the exhaust up to the light, you'll see that there's a big old mould line that goes right the way along all the curved sections. So you want to knock that off and get rid of it, because when you spray these up, and start doing your bluing effect. If you've got a seam on there, it will find it, and it will spoil your entire entire look. So this is the crucial one to get rid of all your seam lines on, because normally it's the first thing that bike builders look at is the exhaust. But, oh, I like your exhaust, mate. So, yeah. Take a little bit of TLC with it. Because the time spent at this stage saves a load of heartache at the end after you've done a really beautiful exhaust job because a dirty great seam down the middle is going to kill it, isn't it? You know, it's, it's a bit like Lady Dyer, may she rest in peace. You know, if she'd had a big airy mole on the end of her bugle, you would have gone, oh. I don't know, it doesn't look right, does it? Bless her. So, yeah. Have some of that. I'll get rid of that seam. All the way down there. And then over the top. And again, I've got some um, flexi-file sanders and things like that that I can go over the exhaust with just to get that seam off when it comes to sanding so you can sit there for ages doing these and if you think it needs more than it does so yeah could look right away along it any imperfection get rid of scrape off any nubs i mean this section i'm scraping here actually slides up into the muffler into the silencer but even so, it's got a nub on it. Now, where that's sliding up through the sand silencer, it'll foul. So knock it off, get rid of it, and it'll make the final assembly of your exhaust that much easier. Again, right round that bend there, and it's the most visible part of the exhaust that pokes out, and they go and put a mould line on it. Yeah. But, can soon get rid of them. Just like. And just work it along, hold it up under your magnifying glass, any light, try and get light to reflect off of it. And if the seam is there, it will show. And then I shall glue all of these together 
and then I'll come back at it once it's all dry with some contact to professional and I'll blob it over the seams and then I'll sand them and create the fake weld lines so all of that to become will be coming up when I come to detail the exhausts probably do an episode on it just start to finish you know uh, almost like a mini e-models tutorial folks so yeah let's grab this piece get that off of there like so and the same with the other side like so and yeah it's a rather rather suave exhaust system and it's a nice little four into one so there's plenty of opportunities to create weld lines and, and stuff when it comes to detailing these and yeah i'm kind of kind of looking forward to it but i'm kind of nervous because this particular bike i'm doing in um lp paint lacquer paints and yeah it's my first foray into lacquers on scale models folks so it's a nice little baptism of fire for me and also hopefully uh, it goes well <laughs> am i nervous yeah a little bit because you know i've i've been doing acrylics on model kits since year dot so but i just i don't know i just i just been watching some lacquer stuff and looking at it and looking at the tamir lp range and uh, kind of it's caught me eye so i'm gonna have a go at it on this one got a couple of car kits that i'm going to do it on and all and uh yeah so have a think about it folks lacquer paints aren't for everyone because of spraying indoors and respirators and all of that lot but this is why i do the voiceovers uh on the audio there because i can then sit there wearing my respirator when i come to paint in a nice well vented place spray away until my art's content and then voice over it at the end let me join this pipe on here little dry fit just to check perfect absolutely perfect i'll just pop that in place hold it with me thumb there you go and then i can come back at it and get rid of any any fingerprints or any glue marks or anything like that that may or may not end up on the exhaust now i'm going to use the white cap for the next bit and i'm going to put a, a slightly thick coat on it and the reason why i'm using the white cap is because i want to squeeze the glue out of the seam so that then when it's all dry i can sand it and then it will get rid of the actual seam down the middle where these two are joined together that's the plan folks i've got me pegs of goodness and they're little clothes pegs that i've just converted i spin them round so they become almost like little alligator clips see and it just makes it easier to grip stuff so we've got wooden clothes pegs turn them round. bink look at that Alligator clips, get hold of that. There you go. Uh, shove a couple more under there. They magically appeared there, folks. There, there, perfect. I'll just let that settle whilst that eases and squeezes. And then I'll possibly <clears throat> I'll go along with a couple of dabs of extra thin just to melt it all down. And it will start letting everything flow where it needs to go. Now I might end up going back over the seam when it's dry. Uh, I tend to do that with contact a professional and make a raised bead. I'll then let that cure and then I'll sand it again until I'm happy with it. So this is a labour of love, the exhausts. So I shall do a almost like a time lapse of it, I think, on on its own episode when these are dry. I'll just film a section and uh let you see what I'm up to on how I'm getting rid of all the joins and that because 
yeah, not everyone knows that you can do it that way. Uh, there's loads of different techniques for doing it, but it's what works for me. And we'll just grab one of those. I'll start letting that settle now. Just have a quick look, make sure it's all okay under the magnifier. A tiny little dab just in there, like so. There you go. And then we can join it like so. And there's a little ear that sticks off of the center of the exhaust that goes into a locator on this. And also you might want to move your pegs a little bit because this wraps around and then goes back up into the silencer as well. Just like that. Now you can lose them now because that's a bit of time to dry. There you go. And then just spin it around and look to make sure that it's all okay. Now mine's got a slight gap there. So I'll clamp it as much as I can, but that is tightly on there. So I'll possibly all run a bit of contactor in there to fill the void and then I'll shape it sand it, smooth it, and do what I need to do. But yeah, and that's the exhaust coming together, folks. And I think it looks pretty, pretty damn sexy, doesn't it? Look at that. Whoa. Move them over there for a minute. I'll clip them up. I've got a little, little uh, clamp up, up on the side there that these all go on. I'll just get them out of the way. Otherwise, my bench will just get cluttered. So, sorry for me elbow being in shot there, folks. Uh, next, next, I reckon, could be the uh, exhaust silencer. And yeah, have a look. What have we got? A little cap that goes on the end of it as well. So that needs to come off. Where the two pipes go in. We need that. Uh silencer there's two mighty great locator peg marks on there so we'll get rid of those smooth them off and then just scrape that mold line all the way down and again this is stage one with the exhaust this is just knocking off the worst of it and then once it's all dried and everything the finessing and the fettling and all of that lot will be done in earnest then. So we'll get it all assembled, get the worst of the stuff off, and then we can come back at it then. There you go, a big old stress mark in that plastic there, so we'll buff that off. Work my way along there, and that's just knocked that down enough for it to start feeling it's disappearing. Let's try and round those around. And they will have a shadow throughout the plastic, so as long as they feel smooth under your finger, they will disappear. That's just a shadow mark that goes right the way through to the other side. So let's put the silence down and look for the end cap there. And that's got two holes then that the exhaust goes into where it joins the front of the silencer. So. Yeah. Like so. And then this bit is going to go in there. And check your instructions, folks, because it goes in a certain way. Okay, so double check your instructions because it presses in because you've got the ceiling cap that goes on the end of this that finishes off the end of the exhaust. So bear that in mind, peeps. Have a good looky loo. Okay, because that piece then fits in the locating hole, like so. Of 
the silencer and the silencer literally just slips on the exhaust it can only go on the one way you'll see as soon as you put the silencer cap on that yeah just slide it on and the two pipes will pop straight in so that's that we've then got a bracket or the exhaust hanger so we want that on there and we'll be looking to make sure we orientate that in the correct way as well so the instructions will show you that and there's some other little plates and accessories that fit on the exhaust system as well so i'm going to get all of them off and we'll pretty much have the exhaust then buttoned down with all of the attachments on it so that i can then know that it's all done and not worry about it so have a look at the instructions hold the exhaust in exactly the way the instructions show you so that when you put the exhaust hanger on it's the correct way first things first we'll put the side plate on and that locates in the two little dimples just on the side there peeps like that bink like so give that a press let the glue bite another bite it bites the dust uh what next what next what next we have got that piece there sits just on top of the little locating pick and pop that on like so check the orientation on the instructions peeps it'll show you it's got pipe that goes on that later on in the build so keep an eye on it and then hold the exhaust by the silencer put a dab of glue in and you want the pipe the pipe the exhaust hanger to basically go vertical so when you look at it it's perfectly straight up because if you put it on wrong it's it's gonna sort of be at 10 o'clock and you don't want it at 10 o'clock you want it at midnight that's the easiest way of explaining it like that see it's at midnight there you go 12 noon bosh that now can sit there dry i'm going to leave that for at least two or three days and then I'll come back at it and I'll sure fiddle with it and, and, and do all me uh, necessary seams. So I've spotted the radiator, so we'll have that. Uh, probably put the sides of the radiator on as well. So that will be another complete assembly. This is look for the sides of the radiator there because one's got the filler cap on it. There you go. We'll have that. Uh, and then the other side just there. Again, have a look at your instructions, peeps, to make sure that you've got your radiator orientated the correct way. Because it is very easy to put these on the wrong way around. So just bear that in mind. I've done it before where you know i've not checked the instructions i've looked at the radio gone yeah that just goes there glue it on and then you look and you think actually i've got, <laughs> I've got my radiator back to front yeah it does happen folks so just check your instruction you know and it was it, it was an ultimate embarrassment because i used to ride bikes and it's like yeah. spot the pilcher we all make mistakes no matter how good we are we have happy little accidents. So we'll just grab that. Nice big wadge of extra fin along the side. Pop that side on like so. And then do the same here. Just like that. And you want your top part of your radiator tilting forward is the side that you put your cap on, on the right. Like so. Okay. There you go. And that's what it should look like. Uh, cut the little pegs on that. Didn't spot them. Nip them off. 
just like that and like that there you go quick scrape I got carried away there got taken nubs off <gasps> shock horror there you go blow them out there you go uh, put that oh, as a mountain peg just all there so we'll put that there and we're not far off of wrapping this episode up folks so uh, pop along to e-models go and visit the store if you want to grab one of these put it in your basket uh, thanks for watching and i'll tune in to part three shortly bye bye for now <laughs>